Welcome to this economics for first years class. In this short video, we're just going to look at a question which is quite rep representative of what you can expect to find in your tests or exams. And this question deals with the production possibility frontier or a PPF, as it is also known. So this question reads, suppose only two products, plastic bottles and plastic bags are produced. And then the first sub question is draw a production possibility frontier PPF, which shows increasing opportunity costs for both products. So the first thing we need to know is what a PPF is. So a PPF is simply a graph of which it shows us the maximum combination of two goods which can produce if we fully utilize all of our inputs. So in your first uh, few chapters of Economics 1, you would have come across the inputs we use in a production process, uh, which could be something like labor or human capital, and also natural resources such as, let's say in this case, oil. So we use a byproduct of oil to create plastics, uh, for instance, plastic bottles and plastic bags. So we'll do a quick graph here just for illustrative purposes. And yeah, on the horizontal axis, we'll put our plastic bags. We'll put a B for plastic bags and on our vertical, we'll put BO for plastic bottles. So our production possibility frontier curve will look like this. So all of the points on this line are combinations. So it shows us the combination of these two goods we can produce if we fully utilize all of our inputs, in this case, oil. So let's say if we only produce bottles, we can produce 20 bottles. And if we only produce bags, we can produce 10 bags. So let's pick a combination here. And we'll say this is nine bags and let's say 15 bottles. So there's a combination on the PPF that we can produce if we, again, fully utilize all of our inputs. So that is that point there. So if we pick another combination here, let's say this is seven bags and let's say 16 bottles. That is another combination. And let's just pick a third combination here. So let's say this is four bags and we move up one more unit to 17 bottles. So the first sub question is draw production possibility frontier or PPF, which shows increasing opportunity cost. So we've drawn the curve here, a combination of two goods we can produce. And let's see if we've uh, indicated that it is increasing opportunity cost. So we start off with this combination here of nine and 15. So let's say we want one more unit of bottles. So we wanna go up to 60. So for one extra unit, we need to give up two units of bags, and then we can have one more bottle. And let's say we wanna go up one more unit. So for our next unit to increase by one unit, now we need to give up three units of plastic bags. So we can see we've got an increase in cost. So for the first unit, our cost was two bags. For the next unit, our cost is three bags. So we can safely say that if we have indicated increasing opportunity cost. Now, a simple way to just uh, remember this is that your curve will look like this one. And that indicates automatically increasing opportunity cost. So in sub question two, say it's indicate on this graph a point which is efficient, E, and a point which is inefficient. So I'm gonna draw a new graph, although the question states on the same graph, but just for ease of illustrative purposes, we'll draw a new graph. So again, we'll put bags and we'll put bottles here and we'll draw or PPF. So for the first one, which is our efficient points, we already said that the PPF, the whole curve indicates to us combinations of the two goods once we fully utilize our inputs. So that definition tells us that all the points on the PPF is efficient because we cannot produce more than this if we fully utilize all of our inputs. So all the points on a PPF is efficient. So any efficient point will be all the points on the inside of the graph. They are inefficient. And why are they inefficient? Well, simply because it, we are able to produce at this combination. It is possible for us to produce there because it's on the inside of the PPF, but it is not efficient because we can do more if we just become better at our production processes. We can produce there. And just as an aside, although the question doesn't ask us, all the points here 
on the outside of the PPF are impossible to achieve because the PPF shows the maximum combination of the two goods we can produce. So any point on the outside means it is impossible to achieve that combination of goods. But we'll see how this can change in a second. So sub-question three is, is point E also allocatively efficient? So we said it's efficient, which means it's production efficient because it's a maximum combination of the two goods. But allocatively efficient is something else. So let's say we are at this point here, which is, let's say, for argument's sake, 8 and 15. So it's a production efficient point, but allocatively efficient, well, we don't know. So the, so the answer simply to this question is not necessarily, because it depends how the people in our society choose what they want. So they might prefer to have more bags and less bottles. Or, in another case, they might prefer to have more bottles and less bags. So the question of whether it is allocatively efficient depends on basically our utility, how the combination we want of these goods. So question four, illustrate the effect of a discovery of a new source of oil used in the production of both products. So this is what we said. We said all these points are impossible to achieve with the available resources. So, but what happens if we have more resources? Well, intuitively, it should tell you that we can produce more of both of these products, seeing that oil is used in the production of both. So if this is our original PPF here, and we say we have now more oil, so let's remember all these points were efficient, and this point was impossible to achieve. But now we have more oil used in the production of both goods. So that last sentence here, both products use oil, is a very important part because it tells you we can increase the production of both goods. So if we only produce plastic bottles, we would be at a new point there, because we were originally here if we only produce bottles. And if we only produce bags, then we can achieve that. So by connecting these two parts, we have a new PPF. And always remember on your graph to indicate that it has shifted outwards. So now, the points that were here that were originally impossible to achieve are now possible and our new efficient points are there. Now, although this question doesn't ask it, I'll just put it as an aside. So let's say for argument's sake that oil was only used in the production of plastic bags. Okay, so this is our original PPF. So if oil, for argument's sake, was not used in the production of plastic bottles, we, if we produced only plastic bottles, we would still be at the same point there. But now if we produce only bags, we'll be at a new point there. So connecting the dots, we find that our PPF has swiveled outwards to that side. So that is it for this question, guys. Uh, remember your definitions for production possibility frontier is a graph which shows us the maximum combination of two goods we can produce if we fully utilize all of our inputs. Remember our efficient points on the graph, inefficient points on the inside of the graph, impossible points on the outside, Unless we have a new discovery of our resource which we use for our production, then we'll have an outward shift. And remember to look out for the sentence whether it is used in both or only in one of the products. Guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, remember to check out tutomeonline.co.za, uh, various other videos uh, for economics and some of your other subjects as well.